is the time to express our joy and share our laughter. For as Mother Teresa said, joy is prayer. Joy is strength. Joy is love. She said the best way to show my gratitude to God is to accept everything, even the problems, with joy. Never let anything so fill you with sorrow as to make you forget one moment of the joy of Christ risen. The joyful news of Easter is just that. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Gloria. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm here. I know you are. And I know you're over there, and I know Jim's over there. Dan. Yeah, okay. Um, Gus. Uh, announcements. Um, um, anybody have an announcement? Okay. Um, um, I, yeah. Oh, I have an announcement. We would like you to turn your back. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would like you to stay that way until we request you to turn back.
Eugene Peterson's The Message. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring your flatters. Sing yourself into his presence. Know this. God is God. He made us. We didn't make him. We're his people. His wells and his sheep. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. We applaud, we laugh, we thank you, God. Let us worship God with joy. Let us sing, this is the day. She said, 
little boar stared at the manure for a minute and then asked, can I have mine with Cool Whip instead? <laughs> God, today we join with you, remembering the resurrection, laughing at the feebleness of evil, the impotence of death. May our delight in your love dispel our fears, calm our worries, fill our emptiness. May our laughter and our joy this day and every day be a blessing to your glory, a testament to your love. Amen, and let it be. I have a confession to make. Last week, I was out for a few drinks with some of my friends. <clears throat> Knowing pretty much that I was over the limit, I did something I have never done before. I took a bus home. <laughs> I arrived safely and without incident, which was amazing. But now here's this bus in my driveway. And I'm not sure where I got it. None of us likes to look foolish, but what is sillier? Chasing after the world and all its gaudy <coughs> trinkets, which flatter our souls, or being a fool for Christ, imitating him in service to others, offering ourselves in love and joy to the world. Let us admit to God the foolish choices we make each and every day. Won't you take a moment and read through the prayer that's printed in your bulletin, and then we'll pray it together. God of joy, let us pray. We know that you have blessed us richly. Yet so often we are down in the dumps over silly little disappointments. You have given us Jesus Christ and raised him from the dead and promised us eternal life. But we act like we don't know it. Forgive us, God. Keep us mindful that you always have the last laugh and that your promise is for true joy in every circumstance and life forever.
the moment and exchange words of greeting with each other. first reading for this morning is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare, and here I am of dying of hunger. Oh, get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. They began to have a wonderful time. Well, yes. They sure did have a wonderful time. <laughs> Can't you tell? Here's how it is, my friends. My boss is a loon. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Look at this place. When was the last time you ever saw so many red Solo cups on the floor? Don't answer that. <laughs> I'm serious. The man should be in the loony bin. That party last night went on till 4 a.m. That's why I'm still here cleaning up while they sleep it off. I'm sure you heard the story. It's all over town. He has these two sons, one good and the other one, well, did you hear what he did? The people he was hanging out with, did you see the tattoos? <laughs> Did you smell him when he came past? Woo! And of course, he squandered all that money. His health, his reputation. And then he comes dragging back, broke and smelly. So what does the boss do? Well, I'll tell you what I would have done. I would have said, now look here, you little snot. Don't think you're gonna take advantage of me again. You come slinking back here, your tail between your legs, all bedraggled and sniveling. Don't you think you have some apologies to make? After you've demonstrated to me exactly how sorry you are, and you are a sorry one, that's for sure, then we'll work out a repayment plan. And you can start working off your debt. Once you've shown me the respect and gratitude I'm due, then we'll talk about what's next. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, here's an old blanket and you know where the barn is. Isn't that what any sane parent would do? But is that what my boss did? Is that what he does? No! What does he do? He goes and gets that boy a new suit of clothes, tailor-made, good fabric, and new shoes, not just flip-flops. Something custom made and a gold ring because that's what every numbskull kid needs when he comes dragging back after whooping it up and partying until he ends up in a pig pen. That's what he needs, a gold ring. And you'd think that would be enough, wouldn't you? Take him back, let him in, clean him up, 
New clothes, new shoes, new jewelry, that's enough, isn't it? No, that's not enough. You know what the boss did then? Yeah, he throws a party. He threw the little jerk a party. <laughs> I don't mean some dignified little family dinner with a glass of sherry and a prim little fruit, fruit tart. No. <laughs> he throws a blowout that lasts all night with barbecue and a live band and dancing and plenty of red solo cups. <laughs> And you should have seen the guest list. Most people would invite the best people or the people who could do them some good, you know, networking, or at least some respectable people who would leave at a decent hour and offer to help clean up a little bit. But not my boss. Nope, not my boss. He invites everybody he's ever met, even people who you wouldn't think would make the cut, people who just come for the party and the free food. Not that I'm saying that's why y'all are here, but... <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I'm sure y'all are fine, deserving people, and you're the boss's guest, so anyway. Then he tells me, he tells me, I can hardly say it, it is, it is almost embarrassing. He tells me that I'm supposed to tell you something. And I want to say this, this is not me talking. This is the boss. Because if it were up to me, well, you don't want to know what it would be like if it were up to me. But anyway, the boss says to tell you that the party needs to keep going on. Yep. He'll be the host here every week. Every week. And you know how it goes. You've been celebrating. You're supposed to keep on celebrating. Yeah, no kidding. That's what he said. He said, now that you've been welcomed in like that good-for-nothing kid, he said you would know how to extend that welcome to everyone else. And you know how to keep the party going. He wants you to celebrate. And whenever you get a chance, bring someone else to the party. The boss also said, not only that, you're supposed to be glad and full of joy when you come into his house. He said you can look it up. It's in the Psalms. It says to come in here singing and shouting and dancing and ready to celebrate. I told them you were Presbyterians. <laughs> <laughs> he said that didn't matter. You can learn. And when somebody shows up for the party, you're supposed to welcome them like he did that kid of his like they're the prodigal son come home, like they were dead and came back to life, like they were your own child, your best friend, or your neighbor. The boss said to tell you, everything I have is yours. So, partay! <laughs> Sing, dance, and Celebrate. And the people said, Amen. Now won't you stand with me and 
and let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us sing 837, What a Fellowship. What a joy divine. Washington, D.C., and wouldn't you know, those guys deducted $95 in taxes. <laughs> a man was circling the block, searching for a parking spot. Finally, after the third time around, he prays, God, if you help me find a parking spot, 
I'll go to church every Sunday and tithe 10% of my income. Immediately, a spot opens up and the man prays, never mind, I found one. <laughs> <laughs> a man is crawling through the Sahara when he's approached by another man riding on a camel. As the writer approaches, the crawling man whispers through his parched lips, Water, please, can you give me water? I'm sorry, replies the man on the camel. I don't have any water with me, but I'd be delighted to sell you a necktie. Necktie, whispers the man, I need water. They're only four dollars a piece. I need water. Okay, okay, two for seven dollars. <laughs> Please, I need water. I don't have any water. All I have are ties. And he heads off into the distance. <coughs> By now, the man has lost all track of time, crawling through the desert, seemingly for days. <coughs> Finally, nearly dead, with clothes tattered and sunburned, he sees a pool and trees and hears a bubbling fountain. Is it a mirage? No, it's an oasis with a restaurant. Summoning his last bit of strength, he crawls up the steps. Water, can I get water? I'm sorry, sir, replies the head waiter. Our dress code requires a tie. <laughs> Let us worship God with our tithes and our gifts.
come now to our time of prayer, I would ask if there are folk we need to keep in our prayers besides those that have been on our prayer list. Um, are there others? Harriet? Jerry Neely passed away this last week, so we need to keep his family. Jerry Neely and his, Jerry Neely's family. Okay, Lori. Good. I, we need to pray for Sarah. <laughs> She's going off to Purdue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and getting married. Not, <laughs> not necessarily in that order. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jan. Any others? Amid the laughter and celebration of this day, it's good that we pause and remember that many carry burdens that need not be carried alone. Let us pray. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts, for the moments of laughter and unbridled joy you give to us for opportunities to laugh at ourselves, for the belly laughs of children, for friends and family who love us because of our quirks, not just in spite of them, for artists who give us the opportunity to see the world through the surreal, for the courage to smile even when difficulties arise. For those who have hope, even when others think there is no hope. For saints in the Lord who overflow with laughter and spread your joy to all of us. For the words of Jesus that defy our logical minds. For teaching us that we can be born again. For the woman who finds a lost coin and calls her friends and neighbors to celebrate. For the absurdity of a camel trying to fit through the eye of the needle. For the father of the prodigal son who is willing to look like a fool as he runs to greet his son. For the generosity of the landowner who will pay workers a whole day's wage when they only worked one hour. For tiny bits of faith that can move entire mountains for the reality that nothing can live until it dies first. For the great reversal of the gospel, that the last shall be made first, that the rejected stone became the cornerstone, that those who wish to become great must serve, that the lost will be found, that the small will become great, that though you are wisdom, you choose to forget our sins, and when we are weak, 
your strength shines through us. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. Thank you for the gift you give us that allows us to enjoy these things to the full. We can laugh because of the most amazing thing of all, that you conquered death, that the tomb is empty, that the light shone so bright that it overcame our darkness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hear us now, as together we pray the prayer you have taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand and sing number 134. Verses 1 and 4 of Joy to the World. to me tonight. Why so sad, her mother asked. Oh, Mama, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in heaven. He doesn't even believe there's a hell. Her mother replied, marry him. 
between the two of us, we'll show him how wrong he is. <laughs> Knowing that Jesus not only taught us how to love, but he taught us how to laugh. And now may our good Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine brilliantly upon you and may you this day and all days know and feel his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.